Right, the last part of circles is uh, basically dealing with more than one circle. So you looked at circles and lines, now we're basically gonna look at a circle and another circle. So to determine whether or not two circles intersect, okay, so that's what we're basically looking at. We're working, looking at where those circles are in relation to each other, okay? Basically, to do that, we have to look at the distance between their centers and also the sum of their two radii. We're only gonna be given, basically, their two equations. And from those two equations, obviously, we can only find the radii of each and the center of each, okay? And from that, we basically have to determine where they are in relation to each other. So we want to know about the size of them, that's what the radius will give us, and the centers will kind of basically tell us where they are on the page. And from there, you basically have five different possibilities, okay? Right, you don't need to memorize these possibilities, okay? You can kind of work them out for yourself, but you may be asked a question in an exam, in a test situation, uh, where you have to basically determine one of the following five possibilities, okay? So the first one, the circles will meet externally at one point, okay? So in other words, we have a situation like that. It's kind of like tangency, uh, but it's not a line, so it doesn't quite count, but the circles meet externally at one point. In other words, and this is how we determine this case, the distance d between the centers equals the sum of the radii. And as I say, you can kind of almost imagine that, okay? If you have two centers of circles, uh, and you work out the distance between those centers, and that is exactly the same as the sum of those two radii, then what's gonna happen with those two circles is they're gonna meet at exactly one point, okay? All right, the second uh, situation. The circles meet at only one point, and that one point is positioned inside the other. That one, one circle, sorry, is positioned inside the other. I knew that didn't make sense. The distance d between the centers equals the difference between the radii, okay? So this is the kind of situation we've got, basically, where one circle is inside the other. So we've got the equations, we've worked out the centers, we've worked out the radii, okay? We can maybe see when we've got those circles, uh, the centers, that they're actually really close together, but more in terms of the proof, the distance d between the centers equals the difference between the radii, okay? So if one radius minus the other radius is the same as the distance between the centers, then we know they are touching still, like the first one, however, one circle is inside the other circle, okay? All right, so the third possibility, the circles intersect at two points, okay? So this is one perhaps you can just imagine, it's just a circle on top of a circle. So the distance d between the centers equals uh, well, that doesn't make sense, is less than the sum of the radii, okay? So where the distance between the centers is less than the sum of the radii, okay, then you have this kind of situation. And basically, these two circles will intersect at two separate points. So then the kind of the flip of that is when the distance is greater than the sum of the two radii means that the circles don't touch at all, okay? So again, you have a situation like this. So the fifth and final scenario, okay, is when the circles do not touch and one circle is contained in the other, okay? This means that the distance d between the centers is less than the difference between the radii, okay? So in other words here, what you're basically doing is you're trying to determine basically what the sum of the two radii is or what the, um, the difference between the two radii is and how that relates to the distance between the two centers. And if it helps, you can kind of draw this out and you can almost imagine what it's going to look like. But they're the five possible scenarios that you have for intersecting circles, okay? So you're going to have a bit of practice on this today, um, but I'm going to give you one example. So we're going to determine how, if at all, the circles with equations, blah, 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 intersect, okay? So it's going to be one of those five previous scenarios. We've just got to work out which one it is, okay? And we're going to base that on the centers and the distance between them and the radii and the sum or difference between them, okay? So same as always, basically when we've got a circle formula, we're gonna to want to find this uh, center and we're gonna find the radii, okay? If in doubt, if you find those two things, you're probably gonna get at least one mark, okay? So going through, we've got 2g equals minus eight, in which case g is minus four, 2f equals six, f is three, in which case the center is four minus three. For the other one, 2g is four, in which case g is two, 2f two is minus 10, in which case f is minus five, in which case the center is minus two, five. So the distance, using the distance formula, but remember what I said about the distance formula, okay? It's virtually the same as your other circle formula. So not this circle formula, okay? The other one that we use, this is virtually the same, okay? So you can just pop it in there with the two points, just make sure you've got them around the right way, very similar to when we're using gradient, okay? But it's four minus minus two squared, so it's a difference between the x's and then same idea with the y's. Okay, it doesn't actually matter which way around you get them but because uh, you squared it, but it might be worth just putting them in that way anyway. 
it's plus here, it's minus in the brackets. Okay, and we work it through the distance is the square root of 36 and 64, which is the square root of 100, which is 10. Okay, so we've got the distance between the centers. We've got each of those centers. Okay, the only thing we're lacking now is the radii. Okay, so we want to find the radius of each one using the radius formula. So we're going to need our C, which is minus 11 in the first one. So then it's G squared plus F squared minus C. So minus minus 11 here. So it's the square root of 36, which is 6. For the other center, we've got C is 4. Sorry, the other radius. Um, well, then we're going to do 2 squared plus minus 5 squared and then take away that 4, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. Right. What we want from all of this is we want the sum or the difference between those two radii and see how it matches up with um, the distance between the centers. And again, you can kind of imagine this, okay? What you've basically got here is that the circles intersect at two points because the distance between the centers is less than the sum of the radii, okay? So if you imagine two circles, okay? So this is the situation we're going to end up with, okay? So what we've basically found, we found the center of each one, and then we're going to find the distance between them, okay? So we've got the distance between the, those centers, but the distance between those centers is less than the sum of the two radii, okay? So we've got a radius there, and we've got a radius there, okay? So that those two radii together, we can see, is bigger, okay? Because we add these two together, we get 11, okay? And because that is bigger than the distance between the two centers, we know they're going to overlap at some point. Okay, I'm going to overlap at two points. So for me, I would do all of this work, get the centers, get the distance between them, get the uh, some of the two uh, radii, and then almost try and draw a diagram. Okay, draw two circles alongside and just kind of work out what's going to happen there. Okay, you can see that if the radii are bigger or the sum of the two radii are bigger than the distance between them, that they're going to overlap, they're going to link up. Okay, if obviously the sum of the two radii uh, was less, then they're not going to touch at all. So you can use that previous page to help you. Okay, but obviously you're not going to get that in the formula sheet, and it's quite a difficult one to remember. So just almost draw the diagram, use your common sense in a way, and just try and work out what's actually happening. This last bit here is only worth kind of one or two uh, marks out of the whole thing. Okay, you can see most of the work comes from uh, what you've done previously. So as long as you do all of that and then just try and make an educated guess on what's actually happening between those two circles, then you should be fine.